lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Lord, this is so, so wonderful, awesome, just so great, powerful, so, so beautiful, omnipresent, marvelous, alpha, oh man, I, I just gotta tell you, it is just mag, 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 magnificent. Baby boy on the track. Lord, you wonderful and magnificent, so powerful, strong, and omnipotent. You know everything, you omniscient. When you start something, you always finish it. From Revelation, starting back to Genesis, you're the record holder, no need for Genesis. Heaven is home, your throne's the premises. Alpha and Omega never is diminishing. You turn mad, men, and a gentleman. You're the prescription, no need for medicine. You're so perfect, great, and intelligent. You are the president of all presidents. So many masses inside your residence Messages from your angels is heaven sent Jesus Christ is who you blessed us with And the Holy Spirit is what you left us with You're magnificent Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life You are, you are Man, you're magnificent Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life You are, you are, you are First, the sun, stars, moon, the whole universe. Let's focus existence to this whole planet Earth. And form man straight up out the dirt. Your the father gave everything birth. The explanation, how much you were worth. Your living water, so we'll never thirst. Bless spiritually, although my flesh curse. Angelic beings are always at work. You invented disciples to create church. You know everything, you don't have to research. You a healer, doctor, surgeon, nurse. You move forward, you don't have to reverse. You just act, you don't have to rehearse. God to see me through the pain and hurt. It's show mercy to what we deserve. You're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life. You're magnificent. You are, you are. Man, you're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are. You magnificent, made the oceans and trees, lakes, ponds, creeks, every water stream. Articulate, creative, everything. Gave us voices so we can all sing. Lord of Lord and King of all kings. You taught Joseph how to interpret dreams. You made silver and gold say ching ching. Made every diamond go bling bling. Salvation, you gave it to us for free. You made the summer, fall, winter, and the spring. I'm so proud to be on the winning team. J E S U S G O D. You made the grass, flowers, roses, trees, fruits, and vegetables, and planted all seeds. Perfect in all your ways, yes indeed. This is my letter to thank you for blessing me. You're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life. You're magnificent. You are. You are. Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are. I just want to tell you, thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. Everything you did for me is not in vain. I know we live in a crooked and corrupted world. I appreciate you for all things. You are all in all. I want to tell you, thank you. I love you. Yes. You appreciate it. Amen. Deep in, within my heart. Amen. I love you. Amen. Amen. Well, you know what? That's the champion. But see, some, 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 some people are not going to be going to have honesty. And I got to say, in my young and dumb state, I've been there. Okay? Lord. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk Talk Show on Elation Radio. I am your host, 
<laughs> Chanel Lynn. And special thanks to the lovely Miss Kimmy Kim and Jerry Royce at Positive Power 21.org. We have on tonight a very special guest with us, Mr. Elder <laughs> Richardson. <laughs> Um, hey, you how you doing? doing? Good evening. What was that? <laughs> well, we were trying to close out on the show, my brother's keeper. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, basically, as I'm walking out the door trying to get to my car so that I can talk a little more freer, I'm leaving one show and coming right to your show. So it's like, you okay. know, I'm making a transition <laughs> now. How you doing today, my sister? I am doing uh, very well as in pressing through, <laughs> regardless of what I'm going through. Um, you know, I had my wisdom teeth pulled. So my, I had to sacrifice my pain pills and uh, oh. a, little bit, a little bit of pain just so I can, you know. <laughs> well, by God's you know, grace, everything pain, is going to work out just fine for you. Now, you say you had your wisdom teeth pulled. I always had a little oh, running joke with that. When they pull your wisdom teeth, does that mean you get dumber or do you get smarter? No, I'm joking on that part. That's not what it means at all. <laughs> well, I certainly hope that I didn't get dumber. You didn't. I guess you, you didn't. be the you judge of that Here by the is. end of the show. I, I can tell you why you didn't get dumber, because the fact that you have a show on and you can bless so many people with uh, sharing what God has given you, that by itself is a testimony all by itself. So, hey, no, hey. there's wisdom in that. There is, you know, yeah. some prudence in that. People get to hear something they ordinarily would not hear. Now, you got to excuse yeah. me while I make it to my car. It's out here. It's raining. And you know, Julie okay, is trying right. to waddle as fast as I can to get in the car. So, you know, right. if I start oh, hollering and screaming, don't, don't, don't get nervous. I'll, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, Lord. I do understand you are a very, very, very busy man. I know you have a lot uh, going on, uh, anointed, powerful uh, man of God you are. I know that um, everyone pulls on you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You know, your profound, you know, words of wisdom are so in-depth with the power of the Holy Ghost. So I know you are very busy. <laughs> So, well, I greatly appreciate you, my sister. I think I'm in a good position where we can where we can get into some conversation. Yes, awesome. Is, is you know, I'm excited. With tonight or she's going to abandon ship? I think she's abandoning ship. I think she's right, abandoning so. ship. I'm not sure, but I know she's definitely listening. <laughs> so then that means it's just Jesus, you and me then, huh? Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Us and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, That's quite all right. <laughs> all right, my so, sister. I think so I'm settled just, now. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Great. So, you know, our discussion um, for tonight is about the thing, basically the things that have been uh, going on and, you know, how a lot of us, um, you know, tend to <laughs> suffer. uh with depression and everything, and so what are what are your thoughts on that? I'm getting a little bit of feedback too. I'm not sure where the feedback okay, is coming from. Okay, is that better? From. Yes, that's is a that lot better. better. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I, I I've got to do something different here. Give me a second. apologize. Okay, that's I, fine. I have to do something different here. Uh, depression. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's uh, demon. And it's uh, demonic and influenced by the devil himself. It's a a tool that's used to put people in a position where they feel like something their their life is over. Uh, there's no hope for them. It makes them feel like they're hopeless. Makes them feel like they are without help and all kinds of things like that. When the truth of the matter is, uh, you know. Depression in and of itself is a really, it's a mindset, you know? I mean, I know it's a mm-hmm. demonic influence, but it's a mindset. Yeah. If the enemy can convince you that 
you know, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish cannot be done, if he can convince you to throw in the towel, if he can mm. convince you to just give up, if he can convince you that you're not going to make it and you're never going to be anybody and you're never going to go anywhere and you're never going to do anything, I'm here to let somebody know tonight, and I'm going to just jump right off the bandwagon and right into the Come water on, and let yeah. you know. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You've got to understand that God, first of all, has his hand upon you. Jesus Christ said he would never leave you, neither would he forsake you. you got to realize that the greater one lives on the inside of you, and greatness is all around you. Sometimes yes. we like to close our eyes and we forget the fact that God is the originator of life and the designer of our lives, and we don't allow him to yeah. do what he needs to do. Every last one of us wants to live on a flowery bed of ease, and we always want things to be perfect, and we don't ever want to have to deal with anything that's going to upset the apple cart. But every now right. and then you need the apple cart upset. Let me help you out. Joseph could yeah. have gotten depressed when his own brothers turned around, threw him into a well, and then sold him My off God. to the Midianites, who eventually sold him off to his cousins, the Ishmaelites. Joseph could have gotten depressed when the baker and the other gentleman that was in prison Prison with him never made mention to Pharaoh that he was in an in prison and he spent three more years in prison. Joseph could have gotten depressed when finally one day somebody remembered that Joseph was able to interpret some things and they called for him. He could have gotten depressed. Let's turn around and yeah. talk about Daniel. He could how'd you like to be thrown in a lion's den? I'm just throwing bit illustrations Ooh. out here. Kind of depressing to know that I'm getting ready to get fed to a bunch of little four-legged furry animals that ain't eight in two or three days. Oh, you know? Yeah. Am I yeah. making sense? Yes, most definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I'm I sorry. Was I, 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 I didn't I mean to go off so soon. I, I was definitely expecting that. That's to be expected. I mean, how <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely right on the money, though. You know, it's, I would be more than de- depressed, you know, and they they did. I mean, Daniel and Joseph and even Moses. I mean, they had more than enough Come on here now. to be depressed just, and oppressed and <laughs> you can know, we, can we go one more thing out there? Huh? You got folks, and it, it, it's so sad that folk would allow depression to set in. So depression is leading to suicide. Depression is the root cause to suicide. A lot of our young people are killing themselves because in their estimation, their life is not going anywhere. And the reality is that nobody's ever showed them anything. When do we take the time to teach our young people skill sets that are going to be beneficial to them in everyday living? And, I mean, we've got yeah. a lot of talented young men and young women out there that can do a multitude of things. You know, each generation yeah. that comes is a little wiser, but yet they are yet a little weaker. And when the we, yeah. when, and it starts in our mind, when mm. the enemy has the, your mind is a battlefield and you allow the enemy to play with your mind and to toy with you. Mm. I don't understand how you let the, the enemy treat you like you might be some little plastic little doll baby of some sort. I want to be careful how I say that. You know, when we were growing up, most of the doll babies were pale skin, and now they got some dark skin doll babies, cabbage patch kids, if I guess I could call them, if we could talk about that. But you got to recognize yeah. the enemy doesn't look at you as a mighty man of God or a mighty woman of God. He doesn't see you mm. as an anointed vessel of the Lord. He sees you right. have an opportunity to make God look bad. And when you turn around and give into depression, depression is first and foremost an emotional mindset, an emotional mm-hmm. mindset that presses you and pushes you to the place and point that you start to feel useless. I like how Jesus told Peter on one occasion, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desire you that he may sift you as we. Now let's break that down for a minute because the enemy is still doing the same thing today. There are many of us. Uh, Sister Chanel, the enemy desires that he may have you. He wants opportunity to get next to you that he may be able to sift you as we. If you know anything about the sifting process back in ancient Israel in those days, somebody would come through and take a spring blade and cut down the wheat and then somebody would come behind them with a winnowing fork and begin to toss that wheat in the air and that wheat the grain itself would separate from the chaff, and the chaff would literally blow away. You know, the enemy looks at you like you might just be a chaff. Think about yeah. that. Yeah. That's the way My he sees God. you. 
And so when Ooh. he gets you to that mindset, you feel like uh, I, 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 I've got nothing to give. I'm worthless. I'm useless. You're saying this mm. stuff. The Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you yeah. hear faith, you react to faith. But when you hear fear, when you hear failure, you will react to fear. You will react yeah. to failure. I can't do it. I can't make it. I can't take mm. it. This world mm. is so cruel. I don't want to be here. And the first thing you're going to do is you kill yourself. And here you play, you start playing with the thought. What's going on here? What is up with our mm. generation today? Sis, let me shut up because I need to hear from you. You're the host of this show. You done got me started. <laughs> I was definitely expecting it. I mean, you have the ab- you have the floor. Absolutely have the floor. Um, but I'm just in I'm in full agreement, you know. But it's so so my question is, isn't so so is it spiritually correct to tackle the tackle depression with the word of God? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I just really feel like you know, at times when, because no matter who you are, no matter your platform, no matter your status quo, no matter your position in or out of the church, everybody, I think, um, you know, experiences situations where uh, the enemy will attack you with depression at some point in, in time in your life. And so I just really think that it's important to um, learn how to trust in God and, and, and his word. And so, you know, I really believe that depression is also spiritual warfare, a form of spiritual warfare, you know? Yes, and it is. I mean, yes, Uh, to answer your question, yes, using the word of God. Jesus himself said it is written, and we have to learn how to say the same thing. That's why it's important for us to study, to show ourselves a proof to God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It behooves yeah. us to learn this word. David said, my word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Do you recognize yeah. the fact that you're sinning against Almighty God when you allow yourself to become depressed? You're saying in so oh, many wow. things, God is doing nothing for you. God ain't working for you. God has just left you out there for dead. God's like that so-called friend who, when trouble came, he just abandoned ship and leaves you. No, Ooh. that's not it at all. We have to recognize right. and realize that the word the word is what we are going to need. The word is quick and powerful. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between the soul and the spirit, and is a discerner yeah. of the heart. And until you Woo! understand how to put this word to use, you won't be able to move in the facet that you need to. The Bible says wisdom yeah. is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all by getting, get understanding. And you can't yeah. get wisdom if you won't allow the knowledge of God to permeate your spirit and to put you in a position in a place where you are able to decipher a situation. I keep thinking about that thing back in, uh, I believe it was Mark, the fourth chapter, when Jesus had just got finished ministering to the masses, and they got into a ship and were going across the Capernaum Sea, and somewhere along the middle of that, while Jesus went downstairs to grab a quick nap, there was this violent storm came up out of nowhere, and the disciples right. fought as hard as they could on this storm to try not to sink, and then finally Peter runs downstairs and says, Master, care us thou not that we perish. Here's what Jesus did mm-hmm. in that situation, and I'm encouraging somebody's heart today that's listening. Oh, if you're yes. going through the spirit of depression, you have to learn to do what the Lord and Savior did when that storm arose. Jesus first and foremost woke up, and then he turned around and sat up, and then he stood up, and then he went up, he looked up, and then he spoke up. Now let's break that down mm-hmm. for a minute. You Mm, have to awaken to the fact that you are in the middle of a storm, and it's not something that God himself may have created, but nonetheless, it's still a storm. There's no need of you panic because this, too, is just a test. The minute you realize you're in the storm and you're waking up, now you've got to sit up because you've got to get your wits about you because it's pretty hard to operate in an emergency situation when you're not able to think clearly before you even do anything or before you even react. Once you've Mm. 
that up. Now you've got to stand up because there has to be some stability. You cannot go into any situation or circumstances unstable and unsure and half-hearted and half-behind about it. Uh, excuse me for those of you that don't like what I just said, but I, I said what I meant. <laughs> you can't go in like that. Now you've got to learn how to go up. You've got to go up in prayer. You've got to seek the face of God because once you go up, now you've got to look up. You need some instruction. You need God yeah. to speak to your spirit. I like the song yeah. that Donnie McClurkin sang years ago when he says, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me yeah. the words that will bring new life. You know, we yeah. have to get to that place. The minute you get there, now here comes the important part. Because you've taken the time to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman, a workwoman that needed not be ashamed, now you can speak up because you have a firm grasp of what the Word says for that situation or that circumstance. And instead of you boo-hooing and dragging your big head all across the sidewalk, breaking up all the asphalt, now you could put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and you can lift your voice to Almighty God. I've often said to people, praise is your way in for the way out. A lot of folks don't yeah. recognize the very fact that your praise alone would bring you out of that depression. Praise is a mm. deliverer. People have to recognize praise is a demon chaser. The devil can't stand your praise. The devil can't you are right. stay around. You, when you got them hallelujahs rolling, when you got those thank you Jesus that's just going all up, he's sitting there saying that's a lot of noise to him. He's covering his ears, and now he's running for cover. Come on here, sis. Yeah. Yes. My God in heaven. That is so true. That is so, so true. So true. That is one, I believe it. That's, that, I believe that's one of our weapons against the enemy, you know, is our praise. Yes, you is. know. My God, my God. So, so, so I'm wanting to, because there are also people who even have the nerve um, to even blame God. You know what I'm saying? Not not yes. knowing that. And I think you made a valid point when you said that um, it's when, it, you know, that, that depression is basically sin against God. And a lot, a lot of people don't understand that a lot of people think that depression is something that you cannot help but see, just like you said, though, depression causes you to forget about God and what he yes. and how he's yes. ever present, a very present help in our times of need. It causes us to forget these things. And so uh, uh, what is what would you have to say to the people who 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 blame God for allowing for them to go through the things that they go through, even depression? Well, I would say to them, you obviously have been reading the wrong Bible or whatever it is that you're reading. God is not the reason nor the blame for depression and things of that nature that come into the world. You'd have to go right back into the garden, back in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, and you'll find out that God placed man in the garden and told him to keep that garden and to groom it and to nurture it and to work through it. He said, of every tree you can eat, but of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you can't eat because in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. He's talking about a spiritual separation from God first and foremost mm -hmm. and an eventual physical separation from life in and of itself. That's where all your problems began and it wasn't so much that when Eve ate of the fruit, and I don't want you to think that it was an apple, peach, a pear, a pumpkin, or whatever. It wasn't none of that. It was the fruit of disobedience. She was told mm -hmm. not to touch the tree and she touched the tree and she ate from mm -hmm. the tree and then she turned around and gave to her husband who also did eat. Adam trusted his wife, and he never checked out where you get that fruit from. He ain't never say that. Now, I want to make sure I make myself perfectly clear here, because mm. I don't want to come across with no fairy tale. But the truth of the matter is, to the person that's going through depression, the person that feels depressed, no, you are not depressed because of something God did, so you're mad at the right. wrong person. 
Get mad right. at yourself for not obeying the word. Get mad at yourself for mm-hmm. not finding out what the word says. Get mad at yourself because you allow the devil to come in there and sideswipe you, hoodwink you, bushwhack you, and push you mm-hmm. around like some kind of bully. Get mad with you because you're the reason why you're depressed. If nobody did anything to you that would put you in that position because your life ain't all you want it to be because you're not living the life of glamour, glit, and glory. Let me help you mm-hmm. out with the glamour, glit, and glory. If you're going to live that Come kind on. of lifestyle, you better recognize that that's going to take some work. It's going to take some determination. It's going to take some pressing forward. You've got to realize that the blessing is in the press. Those people that live that lifestyle have to always get over themselves on a day-to-day basis. They've got to get yeah. away from the fact that they failed. Failure might have happened, but they're not going to sit there and dwell on the failure. They've now got to move to the next phase. They've got to move to the next level. They've got to move mm. to the next dimension. Success does not happen just because you stepped out there and decided to do something. Success is the end result of multiple failures that produced one solution that brought about the success that you now enjoy. My God. My God, my God, my God, my God. That is so true. (laughs) That is so true. And the glitz and glam is not as glorious as as it may seem for some, those who uh, obtain, you know, the world's possessions, but not through Jesus Christ, but through, you know what I'm saying, the secular world or, you know, the enemy, as we would say, uh, there's a price to pay. The, you yes, know, they is. may have obtained, you know, the fame and the fortune and everything. They It may have been or may not have been um, overnight. You know, but even though they may have all the money, and I'm talking about celebrities and talking about people in Hollywood and everything, you Uh know, and as as the word has gotten out, of course, all over America about uh, the Illuminati and all of that, you know, um, those people are not happy. Even though they have the money, they have the glitz and glam, they have, you know. But they're not happy. You're right. Uh You said they're not. They're They're not. not. They No, and see, there are some that have a sense of happiness, but not the total complete happiness that comes with it. They're always constantly wow. having to, to guard their money, find out who's trying to steal from there. They're constantly, continuously yeah. watching over their back to see who's going to sneak up on them and try to, you know, to, to work them over and try to, you know, just put them in a position where they're just losing left and right. They can't right. be happy because they're constantly having to either hire and or fire people. I mean, we can yeah. take the 45th, for instance. You know, God bless yeah. him uh, because he's the leader of this country. But at the same time, you can tell that's mm-hmm. obviously not a happy man. You can just look right. at his demeanor. Some of the stuff that yeah. he says, I'm just wondering, you know, dude, did you really form your lips to say that? You know, I know and I mean. Right? I'm just sorry, you know, you could tell a person who has genuine happiness is an individual who has allowed God to lead, guide, guard, and govern them, who's allowed the protection of God to work for them, who's allowed the correction of God to be that, uh, 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 you know, that staff that they need. I like how David said when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. I like when he talks about the portion of the staff, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Yeah, it hurts a little bit, but I would rather have the guidance and the guarding and the correction of God than to go out there and do my own thing and ultimately get my own self and my lifestyle. Yes. Yes, and then I thought about the scripture too. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose it? I was coming to that. that. Thank God. See, we on the same page. We may not be able to see each other because of radio, but we see an eye to eye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we're connected definitely in spirit, most definitely. We're in the same vein. <laughs> well, listen, let's play with that question for a minute. What yeah, does on. it profit a man to gain the whole world? I mean, Sister Chanel, you could have a billion dollars. You could have 10 houses. You could have bought your own island. You just think of any luxury in life or what you would call a luxury in life. You can have it right now. We're going to hypothetically give it all to you right now, okay? Right. Uh Now, my question is, you have all this. Now, what do you do with it? Right. Now, you're talking about me personally, right? 
Yeah, I'm, we're doing hypothetics with you personally. <laughs> what do you do with well, what all I, the what I def- What I would do is help others to su- to succeed just like I did. You know what I'm okay, saying? So and I would give. Now, I would definitely. I'm going to play. I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate. You would help right. other people, okay? So here <laughs> comes uh, here comes Elroy and Pee Wee and Ray Ray and you know Pee-wee. little Pookie and them. And they, they they just straight up thugs. They thieves. They just steal stuff because they ain't got nothing better to do. Here you trying to help them, and they hustling you, and you know lying to you, and you know uh, trying to swindle you out of your cash every chance they get. And they're coming up with sad sob stories, and you're falling for them. And you know, like tonight, when I was on another show, we talked about that prodigal son. They just want to party with your money. So mm, what do you do? Mm, mm. You have to use wisdom. You really have to be led by God, most definitely. Um, even though the love of God is for everybody, you know what I'm saying. The love, the God that meets needs and everything. Uh-huh. And so uh-huh. apparently, for the one, well, hold on, for the one who, the ones who are swindling and all of that, maybe money is not what they really need at that time. Maybe what they no. need is God. Maybe they need yep. deliverance. Maybe they need salvation. You know what I'm saying? And I agree. So the love of God I- should be. Uh huh. Go ahead. I know. I agree with you. The love of uh-huh. God should be shared, but it, it, you know, it, it, people sometimes can't see love when they have a great need, and then when they have even greater greed, they're never going to see the need. They're never going to be able to see real love because now all uh-huh. they're trying to do is get what they can and can all they get. That's just their mentality. Right. That's what they do. What, right. You know. And I think it's because they lack understanding. They uh-huh. like, I all, like, all they can see is what they see right there at that moment. You know what I'm saying? They don't yeah. even think futuristically like. You know what I'm saying? They're probably not even thinking uh-huh. about where they may end up for eternity. Not knowing wow. that you can have the world's possessions, but you could die at that very moment right after you get it. And then what about your soul? What about where yeah. you'll be for eternity? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, uh-huh. we definitely have to be careful about where our treasures are. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? We can't put our uh, 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 our hopes and dreams on in material things because, of course, they are temporal. They are very temporal, very temporal. So like me personally, I don't live my life to succeed, to gain material things, even though that comes with obedience to God. You know what I'm saying? It automatically with comes with it. You know, uh, 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 but so you always making me go there. That's why I love our conversations. I love our talks. I absolutely love them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, and, and in dealing with depression, one of the first yeah. things uh, 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 we have to come to, we have to come to ourselves and recognize yeah. that this too shall pass. But in yeah. order for it to pass, you have to let it go. Yeah, you know, it's like that little what's that little Frozen song? I think it was "Let It Go, Let, let it, it Go, Let It Go." Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot of folk are holding on to past hurts, past pain, Ooh. past sorrows, past relationships. You know, I'm sorry that you oh. got divorced. I mean, maybe he wasn't the right guy for you, and maybe he was the exact right guy for you. We don't want to sit there and revisit what you did or didn't do. The truth of the matter is, the paperwork is signed. He's gone. Come now on. it's time for you to pick up the pieces and move on. You know, yeah. I'm sorry that your children did not turn out to be the geniuses you thought they were going to be. I mean, you know, it's not right. not our fault that a couple of them have the IQ of a peeled potato, and that's not true in and of itself. <laughs> it's just that they want to act stupid at the wrong times, and that's really right. what happens. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry for the fact that you don't have a perfect family and that, you know, your parents are from uh, some royal blood, so from a royal bloodline somewhere. I'm sorry right. that you got that crazy uncle every time he get drunk, he get out in the middle of the uh, of the floor at the barbecue and does this stupid dance that totally embarrasses you. You got to get <laughs> past that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's about how do we move that. forward from this point. How yeah, do we I mean, pick up the pieces and move forward at this? Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm just going no, up no, I'm you listening to you. I'm <laughs> listening to you because, I mean, and when, in talking about depression, the stupidest things depress a lot of people. You would not believe some You're of the right. stuff that people get depressed on. Why am I going to get depressed because I don't have any money? Right. You do know, I have families, life? We just have do I have life? I'm asking myself this question. Do I have life? Do I have health? 
Do I have strength? Is Jesus Christ the Lord of my life? Is there hope for me in this lifetime? What am I depressed yeah. about? And, you know, and, I, and I'm not asking you personally, but I'm saying this right. to the general public and those who may be listening. What exactly are you depressed about? Right. You know, right. what do you... What, I, I just need to get an answer from the people, and I wish somebody would call your line right now. Tell me what it is that, that has depressed you and why you feel depressed. I could tell you why you feel depressed because you want to be in your own little pity party, and you want somebody to mm. feel sorry for you, and you're looking for somebody right. to come by and say, oh, you poor thing. You ain't poor, right. and you ain't a thing, so stop it. Right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be fucking. Well, okay, no, don't be sorry. You, <laughs> you're quite all right. You know, this is a very transparent show, honey. A very train. We are very <laughs> transparent. Hey, very. Man. I and appreciate so, you giving me this opportunity and chance to be on your show. You know, I, I, and I appreciate. Hey, I appreciate you. you for coming on. You know, I asked and you have delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely appreciate you, man of God, most definitely. Um, so, like, okay, I'm gonna. What are some scriptures, uh, Elder, that you can think of that would be, like, encouraging? If you need time, I, I do have a couple. Um, well, come, I know come on you with are. what you got. I mean, I, I got a couple, and I've got some that, uh, you know, I, I really want to, and I don't have my Bible in front of me, but that's okay. I can I, I can work with that, you know? All right. But if you, okay. I, I'll give you opportunity and chance to come forward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 10 says the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous mm-hmm. run to it and are safe. Joshua 1 and 9 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be right. afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. All right, I I can work with those and thank God for it. Now I want to throw First Peter four and twelve out there, which says, "Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you." And I like mm. verse thirteen of that fourth chapter. It says, "But rejoice." Here we're back at praise mm. all over. Again. But rejoice. Mm. Why? Because the Spirit of God rests in you. And the power of Christ is upon you. And most important, remember, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life if you are saved and have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You should rejoice. Paul said on another occasion, he said, rejoice. And again, I say unto you, rejoice always in everything. We have to learn to give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We have to learn not to look at what happened in the past. We got to stop looking back at what used to be and start paying attention to what is so that we can move forward to what shall be. Paul said, you know, not that I have apprehended, but I uh, I, I forget those things that are behind me. And we have to forget those things that are. We press for the mark of the high call of God. And there is joy out there. There is peace out there. There's righteousness. There's right standing. There is liberty in Jesus Christ. All these things await us as born again, baptized, tongue token, Bible talk, Bible token, tongue talking believers. We have to realize we are the head. We are not the tail. We're ahead. We are not behind. We are above and not beneath. We are accepted mm-hmm. in the beloved. We're more than conquerors. You can conquer depression if you really want to conquer it. The question is, Come how on. bad do you want it? You got to ask mm. yourself, how bad do you want it? You can conquer depression. You have to do like David said on one one particular occasion. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. You've got to yeah. turn around and think of all the great things. And all you really got to do is think, if God brought you through this and he brought you through that, if he did it before, he will do it again. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 My God, that's awesome. That is awesome. Elder, um, is there um, a way that the listeners can reach you? Um, I know you have the pastor's corner. Can you tell us about that and how, um, you know, whatever else you're doing where people can find you and get 
um, guidance and words of encouragement from you. Well, I bless God for you first and foremost for allowing me this opportunity to come on to your show. And, of course, don't look for me on America's Most Wanted because I just won't be there. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyway, uh, there are several places. I have two Facebook pages that I, I, I work with, uh, Elder Ernest Richard Jr. and Ernest E. Richard Jr. on Facebook. We also have a Facebook page which is entitled The Pastor's Corner. Um, also can be, I can also be found on Instagram as well as LinkedIn, uh, Voice About Me, uh, and there are multiple others, Tumblr, and I'm just thinking of them right now. Twitter, cannot forget Twitter, and always just reach out to me. You can email me at Preacher719 at gmail.com, or for ministry purposes only, you can call me at area code 202-802-5209. That number again, 202-802-5209. I think I gave you my email address, but I'll give it one more time, preacher719 at gmail.com. And like you said earlier, The Pastor's Corner, it's a show that taught uh, for leaders and those who are in leadership or aspiring to leadership. It's a roundtable discussion where we tackle the issues of the day. From a, We invite you to join us every Thursday night at 10 p.m. as we go forth with this wonderful show. My co-host, Apostle Irvin Whitlow, and, of course, Sister, Sister Kimmy Kim comes in when she feels like it to join us, and we always welcome her. And, of course, you're always welcome, this just to call in. You already know the number. It's the same number many of you called in on tonight, 646-564-9842. Dial it anytime. I want to say God bless you to Jerry Royce and to Spricker Radio and to all who are listening in your audience. Thank you once again for this grand opportunity to have a minute to share a word with these nine people. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, Elder, I'm definitely uh, going to be calling in uh, this Thursday to tear up the pastor's corner just to pay well, me back for today. You, you may not oh, want to tear it up because we're gonna con- we're gonna continue our topic of discussion, and the topic <laughs> of discussion for this week, just as last week, should teachers uh-huh. be armed in the school system? Woo! Yeah, we're gonna finish that one because we got. All, I mean, it, it got deep, and we 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 didn't have opportunity and chance to complete it, but we want to try to finish that up because, I mean, after the 45th a couple of weeks ago said what he said, that he would give bonuses to teachers who would go and get training and would be willing to carry a firearm, you know. Wow. It it makes me question his leadership ability. So uh, Apostle Whitlow and I brought this up last week just to give you a small taste. So let me throw Uh a scenario out there with you, sis. I know you only got just a few minutes left, but I want to throw this scenario out there for everybody that's listening. So you send your child to school. And your teacher is packing. They 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 got a thirty eight snub nose or a, mm. a Glock or whatever the case may be, and they're having a bad hair day. And all of a sudden, a fight <laughs> breaks out in their classroom, and two of the kids are a lot larger than the regular kids, and kind of on the muscular side. They're darn near grown men. And so, in uh. the middle of that struggle, and you trying to break it up, one of them manages to unlatch your gun, take the safety out, and pull it off, and start shooting. Do we really need to bring extra violence into an already volatile situation? My Mm. God. And, you know, I was thinking the very same thing uh, on your show last time when you all had the discussion about should uh, uh, teachers, uh, you know, be allowed to be armed uh, with firearms. And I was thinking that same thing. I was just talking to somebody else about that because too many incidences, too many uh, uh, accidents, too many, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just too many things can transpire out of that can that can cause you know cause people's children's lives. It's just crazy. I agree. I agree. Woo! But I mean, that, well, I that that's going to be our conclusion and our concluded topic of discussion. And we invite anybody that would like to join us to come in. You know, we try to keep the door open. We especially have been inviting you ladies of elation to come in, but all oh, y'all chicken. So, you know, I don't know what to <laughs> say with y'all. I am no chicken, sir. I am a woman of Whatever. God, and I am the Whatever. head and not the you know what? I'll believe that when I see you Thursday night at 10 p.m. I'm going to leave it right there. 
But in the meantime, well, you, Sister Kimmy, you didn't call me out, Elder. You know I don't play. I, I play no games. I will be on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, respectfully though, we 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 enjoy having you because we always want to know, you know, get a a, a a woman's perspective concerning certain things because certain topics come Great up. Guy. Let's just be honest. We men try our best to answer, but it, sometimes it's just an answer that only a woman can give. So, you know, All right. with that, well, we're gonna end it on that note. <laughs> we gonna end it on that note. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elder. I thank you so much. I appreciate you so much uh, um, for coming on Let's Talk. I want to thank the listeners for all your support and all of your love. This is Let's Talk Talk Show on Elations Radio, where we are striving to change the world one show at a time. Everyone have a wonderful evening and a blessed week. We will see you right here on Elations uh, Radio uh, next Tuesday, same time, 7 p.m., Central Standard Time. Thank you so much, Elder. I will see you Thursday. God bless you. Looking forward to having you. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.